Uh, welcome to SF's virtual design conversations. My name is Linnea and I am an industrial designer by training and here at Sunberg Farr I help with our marketing and communications. And for any of you on the call today who may not be as familiar with Sunberg Farr, we are a full service product innovation studio in based in Detroit, Michigan. That's our only location in the world and we've been supporting the mobility and consumer product and medical product industries and beyond um, since 1934. So uh, just before we get to the main attraction here, we have a, four awesome speakers lined up for you. Um, we're really excited. Uh, but before we do that, I just wanted to walk you through a couple things. So first, first things first, um, the chat uh, is at the bottom of your toolbar. You'll see it there in your Zoom toolbar. And why don't you go ahead and open that up? Uh, that is where we will be taking all of our Q&A and any comments or questions from you during our time together. And this is called Virtual Design Conversations because our favorite part of this is um, hearing from you folks. Um, so uh, if you have any questions during the time, please just stick them in the chat box and we'll answer them as we go. Uh, so with at, having said that, there will also be some resources in the chat box that I'll be posting throughout our time together, including the link to our event page today. So if you have any questions about what's up next, who's speaking next and when, uh, the link will be in the chat box. You can click on it and see all of that information. Uh, the other thing is also we have a bunch of upcoming virtual events for you guys and I'll be posting the link to our next virtual event, which will be our tonight show for industrial design thinking coming up in July. So you definitely don't want to miss that. If you like what you're seeing today, you'll definitely like uh, the tonight show for industrial design thinking. So um, and please, we would love to see you on social media. You can also get tons of updates on uh, helpful resources, articles, um, and events from us on social media. So I will, uh, I will share those links and give us a like, give us a follow, we'd love to see you. Okay, other than that, uh, if today sparks any questions that we somehow don't get a chance to uh, visit and talk about, I will post our uh, emails in there and you can reach out to us at any time. We love to hear from you. So um, I think that's all the housekeeping things we have for right now. So without further ado, I'm going to invite Jivak to take over the stage here uh, and we should be able to get started. Jivak? Yes, yes. Hello. Thank you. Thank you, Lanea. Once again, that's Lanea the Great. Uh, I don't know what we can do without her. Lanea, keep on doing what you're doing. Uh, once again, uh, for uh, some of the folks who might not be knowing me, uh, my name is Chivak. Uh, I am also an industrial designer uh, and I just love what I do. Uh, it's great to be in the studio, great to be at Sunbrook Farrar as such and just try to understand uh, and do what we sincerely believe. We try to make each and every object or artifact a little bit more better and a little bit more beautiful. So. Uh, we can talk a little bit about uh, studio also, uh, but first of all, welcome to the studio, by the way, uh, do not touch anything. We are still under uh, social distancing. We still have to maintain uh, the spaces. We have to maybe uh, now do namaste uh, more than ever. Uh, it's going to be interesting how, how we are really uh, micro evolving. When this last, this is our fourth episode of uh, VDC, Virtual Design Conversations. The fourth one, that means it's our fourth month of lockdown and my God, if you just look at this small microcosm and the way we have gone through it, it's, it's, quite, it's, it's quite different, right? Means earlier means when we heard about this in March or something, it was like, okay, something somewhere in Italy or maybe Wuhan, something is happening, life was still chugging along and suddenly we understood like, my God, the airways are open, things are going to come over here and they did. The fear, the panic. Uh, not to know what to do, immediately set into the behavior that we do, immediately copy. What did we do in 1918? What did China do at that time? Lockdown, everybody went to a lockdown and I, it, it, it really helps. So, but I think as we're just going to the different elements, like I mean, I'm understanding the awareness, uh, then the, I would say the fearness and the copy. But then we started to scramble, right? Means we all grabbed our desktops, grab our office chair, set up uh, our office back in the basement or back in the kitchen or back in the rooms you might find uh, in the house. We reacted. We did not respond to it. And all those things are somehow parallel to product innovation or invention also. We sometimes just start to react to the stimuli rather than 
respond to our beliefs of why we are doing it, what should be done, and how it can be done uh, in a better way. But we started to react, we started to scramble, we started to be more cautious. Right? Means the first month, remember, it was it was scrambling, but it was still cautious mode. Means I had to first find two or three tables in the house uh, for me, for my wife, for my kids. The virtual schooling now it is an uh, thank God it's let's say vacation time. But it was it was quite quite a task to do that, and then that grocery shopping, and then having the uh, I would say uh, cleaning the vegetables and fruits. Uh, we still try to do that a little bit, but. We went through those phases, right? Everything was literally virtual, I think, maintaining a distance. But slowly, we are a little bit, I would say, adapting to it. Now we are understanding, we are exploring that world. And I think we are becoming more comfortable too. Means, I think some of you know me. Means We are, at least me, or the way the world I am in. I am in strategic growth and business development. There's nothing beats than person to person, meeting people, shaking hands. Now it's just like an amazing term. Uh, but at least trying to go and interact, not just with the voice or the body reactions and all those things are pretty valid. But in the second or the third month, we started to adapt, I would say, pretty fast. Means I can't believe I'm saying this, but virtually we can do plenty of things. Means our entire studio is virtually capable. We were always doing uh, work virtually because we are, as Lanea said, we are only here in Michigan, but we service the entire nation and the entire world from over here. So we are used to those things. But as an uh, let's say as a business development person or marketing person, we were pretty much nicely reacting and adapting to it. And that was pretty uh, pretty amazing to see how, how that was happening. We started embracing go-to meetings and Zooms and all the other things. I think now we are having the Zoom fatigue a little bit because it's back to back, right? At least in our, our studio, we try to keep the meetings at 10, 15 onwards to 11 rather than at 10 o'clock because the last meeting doesn't end at 10 o'clock. So we have to now have a little bit different etiquettes of what we are doing and still continuing uh, in those things. So I think uh, not every job can be done uh, virtually. I should always put that uh, disclaimer out there. But I think those which can be done, I think there are different tools that we can leverage. I've been on conferences. Uh, these are, uh, let's say, con conversations, understanding different POVs of people, insights, perspectives, uh, not necessarily wearing a tie and having some boring conversation, not that it happens at a conference, uh, but uh, the virtue or, or the intention here is different. But as compared to physical conferences, now I've been to some virtual ones and some of them are, eh, some of them are pretty good, means it's like, yeah, you can do, means all depends on how we are interacting with the crowd. The speaker is speaking, but you are still speaking with the audience and reacting to it. Those kind of an online, real time adding to it or subtracting for it, it's, it's pretty interesting. The fourth month was again interesting, right? Means you're having haircuts at home, saving 15 bucks here, 15 to 18, depends on where you go. Uh, but there are some things we are a little bit more, uh, I would say, um, trying it out and sometimes you just have to go I think a little bit more beyond your comfortable zone to understand what other things uh, you might be uh, like some of things you will like some of things you will miss it means I miss uh, uh, physical interactions as such so but at least we got to see how you how we are trying to let's say evolve micro evolve evolution is not a good word right now over here how we are adapting to what we are doing and the same thing came in the product world too right means earlier we saw the first month the scares or the frenzy of buying toilet paper rolls and we talked about that in the first VDC and the reason behind uh, behind that kind of end behavior but eventually we saw uh, what was essential versus what was unessential the way the products determined it the way the products flew off the shelf not just the hand sanitizers and the first uh, Clorox wipes or things like that but the next thing to go was uh, garden slip and slides and trampolines and uh, you cannot get it right now because kids cannot go and play and have, uh, I would say, uh, play with other kids. So how can you still have your kids get out of the house and still have some physical exertion? Those are the best toys in the world uh, right now. And there is a back order for those things. Other thing I heard was barbells. You cannot buy barbells right now. And it's, it's kind of an, uh, a gray market over there uh, as such. Means people are selling some barbells and dumbbells made out of concrete for hundreds of bucks. It's, 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 it's different. To see how how things uh, how things are happening or not happening, but again coming back to the pets, uh, people are buying pets for their kids to keep them a little bit more engaged and maybe not employ a babysitter. It's impossible to do that too. But the pets are fine off the shelf, good pets, uh, all sorts of pets. I just hope when it all comes back to normal, uh, there is not an over. Uh, 
over, uh, I would say, return of pets back to shelters and all the, all those elements. So hopefully this is this is there for uh, for the, uh, for goodness. But some of the industries that are really taking off, not just the tobacco uh, and 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 I would say uh, the alcohol industry, but like RV industry, fifty five percent growth. Not only just overall growth, but the first time buyers growth uh, earlier it was thirteen percent and now is beyond fifty. It's pretty interesting to see how people are trying to use it uh, in the way they want to uh, want to see and extract the benefits for them in this pandemic times as such. So it's amazing to see how, how things have been uh, evolved as such. And we can come back to the, uh, the world of design studio too. Uh, but the thing is, I think before we come back to the uh, main points and uh, I already see uh, Tim uh, is already there uh, as such and we will, we will welcome him in, in, in five minutes or something. But from a design studio's perspective, uh, the good part is, uh, I means yeah, there is the world of, I should not say doom and gloom, but we are right now in a in a state of uh, kind of an a doom and gloom. That means the pandemic is around. We have protests for all the right reasons going around right now. Uh, there is a, uh, the economy is still stalling. It shows a little bit kind of an positiveness, but again, uh, some states go into uh, red uh, the COVID thing, and then it comes down. The election is on the top of it at all and the ballots and all those things are pretty interesting uh, things to look at. The mental health, uh, that's a pretty big thing going right now. Uh, it's pretty important as such. The number of deaths in the USA means it's not just about the testing or number of deaths, but I think the underlying factors, systemic factors of underlying conditions of obesity uh, or respiratory problems or diabetes and other things and those somehow are getting exposed because of the fragileness of, of our immune system. So there are so many underlying systemic elements that are coming to light just because of the pandemic and to top it all, India and China over there, both nuclear com companies, countries, they want to fight over the border. So it's, it's really, a, in some areas, is a bad time uh, from, from the pandemic perspective. But from, from a design studio perspective, I think, I, I think we all know, typically we are the canary in the mines. We are the kind of an, uh, the earlier kind of an indicators or the triggers you might get to see. Typically, when I say we, means the design uh, studios. It might be external or it might be internal also. They get to see the traction. Like guys, earlier was, as I said, the cautiousness, the fear, the panic. And so suddenly some projects uh, were indefinitely postponed or just canceled or maybe pushed uh, or changed in the budget and that happened everybody understands that but now we are seeing a decent uptick in the kind of proposals we are writing or the way companies are approaching us uh, and not just the bigger companies means the bigger companies earlier did not expressly always say about mention about sustainability or circular economy or, or the way we can use reprocessing or uh, or some more recycled plastics or uh, some amazing technology but now they're expressly considering that and that's that's a great positive point, not just from the, uh, uh, I would say the ecology perspective, but understanding there is no one single user. We all are interconnected and the societal benefits that come from the product, somebody has to think about that and the entire LC and the life cycle management uh, principles can be brought or can be understood by the way of industrial design as such. So that's a pretty big thing about the push from bigger to uh, semi big companies, not exactly the medium size or entrepreneurs as such. Talking about entrepreneurs, uh, that's the next one. We are seeing an, a very amazing uptick in the world of uh, startups uh, and inventors. Uh, everybody has a million dollar idea. Everybody has a retirement kind of an idea. And there is no other good time that right now to use design as an investment. Always people think about design as an insurance. It's, it's not it's the other way. But right now people are understanding, okay, how I can try to make make things meet again by investing in the, what they love and what they believe uh, can elevate any other problems in the society or in the world. So people are trying to think more from solution oriented, not just from being stylized or a frivolous kind of a non-essential thing. So I think just because of what we are going through, even the inventor in us is, understands about, yeah, that is a little bit more flowery and frivolous. I still want to make sure I understand what is good design. And that's purposefulness, the meaningfulness of why we are doing it is now really talked at the first meetings itself means yeah, the first meetings are still pitching to each other, introducing each other. But when we jump into the conversations, it's really amazing and liberating to see people are directly coming to say, okay, let's talk about the actual attributes, the benefits that people want rather than let's say what we as an in, you know, we inventor, uh, we as an inventor or management industry wants. And that kind of an pivoting uh, from 
from literally every startup or startups or medium sized or big companies or enterprise companies uh, that is happening that's that's literally a good thing and means one of the paradigms that we live with is good design is good business well, we are doing design it might be hardware software it might be a service design or experiential design it has to be aligned with the business world but the business models are also changing uh, changing uh, changing over and that's the third one i would say that i wanted to share about uh, the way people are looking even at the business model what how are you trying to make sure you transfer your saved cost directly to the consumer i was talking with uh, I'm, I'm trying to look at buying some of the compost uh, bins for my backyard. I try to dabble into uh, raised bed gardening as such. So if you want to buy one, uh, the volume uh, really matters. Uh, and then you want to buy a fully assembled one with the volume, it becomes pretty expensive. But if you buy one which, let's say, is flat packaged and you you actually are going to assemble it, that's a completely different kind of an, way to go. Right? Means right now, the ones I'm looking at are not designed, they're designed to be assembled but maybe assembled on a line somewhere else, but not to be assembled like an, uh, I would still say a lay person like me or the first time builder as such or as a project with the father and some kind of a thing. So the way even the products would be constituted or will be configured will depend on the business model, which depends on how to drive, uh, I would say, uh, or how to divide, uh, I would say, uh, the margins equally between the manufacturer equally or more or less uh, and, and the end user too so that kind of a way of really thinking from uh, the user perspective right means of the all the fundamental tenets of industrial design not just the beauty beauty becomes a pretty important part of it but we never start over there but how it is going to be used means we always think about the marketing funnel most people know the marketing funnel uh, the awareness of it uh, then the interest of it then the consideration then the intent then the research then the actual purchase and then the use as a design studio, we start with the use, how it's going to be used or misused, how it's going to be stored, how it's going to be assembled, how it's going to be serviced, how it's going to be maintained. All those things come pretty strong. And then you go back and try to see, okay, now we can promise to deliver those things. And that's why we can promise uh, our brand kind of, I would say, expression. So uh, I, 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 I went a little bit over 12.15, uh, but within one minute, uh, Tim will invite you to the stage as such. But the main crux here is, understanding the brand promise and then making sure you squeeze that into your product itself. The product would be the liberation of your promise out in the market. And that's typically, uh, we always talked about this, we expressed about this, but now we are seeing people uh, because of the essential and unessential, uh, I would say bifurcation that's happening over where people understand that. And it's a good thing, I would say for, for the designer. So, uh, Maybe that was uh, could have been my monologue. Uh, we can start with our uh, uh, virtual design conversations. And uh, Tim, you can unmute yourself and, and you can share your video as we are going uh, going through this. So the entire element we started with this was to make sure we just talk with people. Hey, Tim, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Awesome. Nice to see Welcome you. Welcome to my basement. <laughs> I, I love it. Uh, so we, uh, we were just talking about uh, the VDC and the entire element of VDC is uh, we reach out uh, to uh, for people uh, who are thought leaders, uh, who want to share their POVs, their point of views, uh, their perspectives, their, uh, their imagination, their thoughts, uh, their insights in what they are doing or also around the periphery too. So we will certainly talk about what people do for, uh, for their day-to-day -day life. But today here is, uh, uh, and, and I would say attempt to talk about what people passions are what do they find other things which are needed not just for the workforce but for the next incoming in workforce maybe the education perspective or, or the culture parts of it or just what we want to do in the business so that's what the entire element is today we have four speakers we're going to talk, uh, start with tim uh, so once again tim uh, nice to see you there i see some amazing bikes in the back what well, that's uh, are you like biking uh, yeah i do like uh do like to bike uh, it's turned into a little bit of a a nasty kind of habit, I guess, right? But uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah. I don't have a fancy car. Endurance biker or a speed? I got a fancy bike. Uh, sorry, are you an endurance biker or speed biking? Yeah, mountain biking. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And I, I can, yeah. I, I don't, I dabble just a little bit into that, but I'm, I'm not, I'm yeah. nowhere near a mountain, a mountain biker as such. What other things do you do for fun, uh, Tim? What do I do for fun? Oh, geez. 
That that's a good one. What have I been doing for fun for the past three and a half months? I live in my basement. It's uh, I think you could store meat down here. Uh, it's so cold. Um, it's uh, you know it it's been interesting. My wife is actually running for uh, for a state house seat, and uh, this house is quite busy. Um, it's, uh, it's constantly, I mean, the internet is being utilized, right? Uh, quite a bit here. Um, some we've, we've, I thought we could break it. We haven't broken it yet. So, um, uh, but she's, she's online calling and, and doing all that, trying to, to run a campaign from a house. Um, so I have kind of, I've turned into all of a sudden I've got bills at my desk now that need to be done you know you had to find a home so i found a home in the basement um to the basement right I, now. I right I, so i just I'm, I'm trying to just as best i can to stay active so um if i got time that's my fun right it's just trying to find some time to stay active um so it is always anyway that's Keep, keep on that's moving. What I've been that's doing. what they say. That, that's pretty interesting. Yep. I just want to start with a very basic question. I uh, means you are uh, you are with uh, FCA. You are heading at G, uh, the exterior G brands for the uh, forward vehicles uh, as such. Means I I came here to uh, USA 18 years ago. I think just like me, anybody else in the world, when we think about Americana, like when we talk to just have an uh, my image was, I, I'm not joking, when I was in college, uh, my, when my mom said, uh, when you go to the US, not if, when, uh, what would you think? And I always used to think about myself, I'm not kidding, wearing a Levi's jeans, having a leather jacket, having a cowboy hat, uh, literally at that time having a Marlboro uh, <laughs> in, my, in my hand. The great outdoors of the Americas, rugged behind me, maybe the mountain, Montana kind of a mountains, and a Jeep, uh, a classic Jeep, uh, maybe a C5, uh, 7 or something like that, always in that picture. And that's, that I think Jeep is such, uh, as such is a quintessential kind of, and I would say married with the Americana persona as such means it's a privilege and honor I know for you to be a part of that. But how do you handle that kind of a burden on your shoulders? Oh, is it a burden? I mean, it's kind of a blessing. I mean, it's yeah. like you, you've got a brand that that is so impactful um i think so and meaningful so ingrained uh in our culture uh it's uh um it's uh i don't call it a burden i mean that's that's a, it's a great opportunity really um build on those values right uh it's a uh, it's an easy one so to speak right i mean i think everybody has has some paradigms of what a jeep is um sometimes it's a it's important for us as designers to kind of push on them a little bit. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we, we do our best, um, to, to do that and to challenge and maybe some thoughts, but, uh, no, it's, it's not a burden. It's been a, been a blessing. So I, I think the way you're explaining it, uh, maybe I should have used the word like a challenge or, or the way how you, mm -hmm. how you still try to maintain the integrity yeah. of, of how it starts or what the first thing that evoked in the mind about the bars and, and the lights, but then how do you still keep on making it fresh and fresh each and every year? And that's, that's, that's a, a big challenge as such. So, uh, and you have been predominantly uh, with the Chrysler brand, right? So you are steeped with the, uh, with the branding. Well, I've been with FCA for uh, about 30 years, so um, it will be 30 years on the 29th of June. So, um, wow, that would be. Uh, I know it's hard to, you know, it's like you look so young, Tim. How how can that be? But, um, <laughs> but uh, uh, 30 years. Um, but um, up until about three years ago, I had been doing the advanced work uh, for us uh, for about. Uh, about eight years prior. So um, for the past three years, I've been doing uh, been doing the uh, Jeep work. Uh, we got some good stuff uh, coming. You'll see uh, you'll see that shortly. We're building plants, right? Employing a lot of people down in in Detroit uh, to help build those those products. Uh, and then Warren. Uh, so um, very exciting times. Wrangler's doing great. Uh, I think uh, we may have had our our second best month last year, last last month, which is kind of a mind blowing kind of you know, wrapping your head around. How does that, that happen? 
Well, it's, I think for all the reasons why you can't find the kayak, you can't find the bike, you can't find, right. It's like people want to go out and, and experience, um, in a kind of social distance. And if you can do that inside your, in, inside your Jeep with the doors off and on all that other stuff, I'd be curious to know, like if, if motorcycle sales went up too, I hadn't checked that. Um, but you would think that, uh, but all of those things that become kind of more of a private kind of thing might might be more more appealing right now. So, um, anyway, so. Well, that, that's pretty interesting. That's, the last month was the second best month ever. That's pretty yeah. amazing. So, uh, trying to uh, shift but towards the, the topic of today's discussion as such means uh, you are a designer. I think, uh, as I said, myself, Lania, Kurt, uh, David, we are also industrial designers as such, and we understand or let's. <laughs> Uh, we assume that we understand and learn about we are always the practitioners and learners of design thinking as such uh, but I think your topic is pretty interesting about not just industrial design thinking or design thinking but I think you want to take us on a journey of how to understand that through the world of the K-12 kind of NBA and how they can be exposed uh, or should be exposed to the way eventually what we think are the critical I would say uh, uh, needs of the profession as such so uh, maybe I can I can uh, stop uh, talking for some time and we want to lead us uh, on those thoughts and then we can again come back and do the Q and A as such. If you want to share the screen, uh, feel free to go ahead. Sure enough. Yeah. And go through that. Um, I guess I'm doing this one, so I'm not a Zoom professional here. So, um, can everybody see that? Uh, see not yet. Uh, oh, I got to hit the share button. Yes. Now you can. Now right. we can see it. Look good. Yep. All right. Um, so like I said, um, I've, uh, I've been with, uh, Chrysler FCA for, for 30 years. Um, my past three years I've, I've worked, uh, for, for the Jeep, um, the Jeep brand primarily on the exterior. Um, but I also had a role, um, up until March, uh, for K through 12 and community outreach. That also entitled, in, entailed all of the recruiting and, and whatnot in, at the collegiate level. So um, I wanted to take you a little bit through through our journey on, on that and kind of leave you with uh, maybe some opportunities um, as, as we go forward. Um, uh, so history of me, I, I was always drawing. Um, I was a bear enthusiast, apparently in second grade. Somewhere along the line, I picked up a, a maybe second grade uh, race car enthusiast. That's a that is a uh, that's a freshman in high school um, sketch. Of, um, and uh, and I was a, apparently I liked eagles. So <laughs> um, this was stuff that I did all the time. This was where I did it, you know, it was industrial, we had an industrial arts class, um, you know, yeah, you're always in art class, you did everything I could to stay away from, from math, um, and uh, somehow that all ended up uh, me at the uh, University of Cincinnati, um, got to work on some great projects, uh, got some great internships, um, I, uh, I had the opportunity to work at Chrysler, uh, three times, um, I worked at uh, at Kenner Toys um, for two or two semesters, and then I uh, worked at a place called Design Works. So you guys probably heard about it. They do all the cool stuff for BMW. They weren't doing BMW stuff at the time. They had just started, um, but Chuck Pelly had started that. Um, and uh, anyways, that that somehow led me in those three co-ops obviously led me to a path that at FCA and Chrysler at the time. I've got to work on some great projects um, from growlers to to minivans to renegades to some concept cars as well. So um been pretty uh, pretty happy with the experiences that I've had. Um and I work with some some really great people and I work in a really great space. Um it probably is this empty right now. I know it is. Uh, we haven't come back um, in, in any great numbers. I think there might be a, at most 40 or so people in our office right now. Uh, they're primarily doing all of the milling work that we've been, all the data work that we've been doing. So now we're doing all the milling work for it. And eventually we'll get back into, into the office 
where we can start actually working on on some product um, with our hands, right? Yep. So um, I'm longing for those days because I can't wait to get out of my basement. Um, but uh, it 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 really kind of has started to highlight as we we've, we've started to to look for new talent uh, to and, and and with all of our um, outreach and working uh, working um, or doing internships uh, interviews with uh, with Cincinnati with Art Center with Cleveland with CCS with Academy of Art with Carnegie Mellon um, I think where we've started to to recognize is that we're really starting to see a deficiency in in art and as, as kids migrate from high school into into college and i don't know if that's just you know old man talking and you know back in the day kind of stuff um but it um it seems like there's been 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 a reduction in in those opportunities for for students um k through 12 art right so case in point these two my kids um back in the day uh Neither one of them actually, well, I should take that back. My, my daughter is now going to med school. My son just finished his, his freshman year in college. I have a, a, a soon to be doctor, well, not soon to be, quite a journey for her. And then a business, uh, a guy who wants to go into business. They had one art class in their entire high school career. Right, my daughter took a saw her her last semester of her senior year. She had a pottery class, um, and my son had I think an art class sometime in in the sophomore year, and and it's really a, it was disappointing. Um, you know, like I always I kid my daughter. She could have been somebody, right? She could be an industrial designer. Um, my son could have been an industrial designer, but you know, we're gonna be a doctor and some business guy. Um, but nonetheless, why is that? Because I think it's all been, you know, this, um, uh, we keep, you know, and I think the entire focus, uh, during their, their development, um, has been, been around steam. Um, and, um, and, or STEM, um, the thing that I, I guess I'm, I was really disappointed about is that, you know, we obviously couldn't get to a point in their career, um, in their high school career or in their, their early K through 12 education where we can get to add the A to it. Right. Yeah. Um, I think it's ironic when, I mean, look at the one that's creative, right. And the one that's not on that one, on that presentation. Right. Um, but uh, really what we wanted to do, obviously from, and where I saw it was if we can get to some K through 12 um, students, which we do a ton of outreach um, with, if we could get to a point where we could develop actually a curriculum that we could support um, as FCA and as industrial designers, um, we we uh, we thought we could get to to at least feed our pipeline a little bit better. So the kids that are fortunate enough to live within, you know, a 50 mile radius of us, um, we'll go for visits. Uh, if they can get to our office and we can arrange it, uh, we'll have we'll have some interactions with them. Um, for those that are fortunate enough, we can give them a sketchbook um, at the time, um, a sketchbook that was always laden with like really almost super uh let's say um masculine kind of imagery to it and and I, you know i kind of was stepping back and going i think we're almost you know there's a almost a sense of fear it's like i can't i can't draw anything like that you know so so we were starting to to rethink a little bit of um how we how we wanted to to approach our interaction with, with kids um that said, we were also in the process of, of um, and, and we had to establish this drive for design mechanism that was a, uh, 
Um, at the time, it started as a little bit of a regional competition. If you want it, you can come and visit the office. We would give you, uh, I think at the time, you could get a Macintosh uh, a, you know, an iPad um, that turned into a sketch pad, and, and eventually it's turned into to a Cintiq. Um, but again, our pool that we were getting from from our regional area, from the from the art instructors, was was pretty small. We'd get 20 or 30 applicants for a, for a design competition. So, what we wanted to do, it it was, you know, we we had some success. Um, you know, uh, we found some talent uh, that 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 we liked, and we were able to actually get. And some of these students are actually at um, at um, either LTU or, or CCS right now. Um, but we wanted to go back in and, and have another kind of pass at, uh, at what we wanted to do with our K through 12. And, and outreach. Um, so we we wanted really to to advocate, and if we could get get a dialogue in in front of the the right the right people within the school districts, advocate the creative process. Uh, we wanted to obviously inspire students. Uh, we wanted to ensure parents that if a child is creative, that that's a good thing, right? Uh, it's not a bad thing. They won't want to end up poor. They might end up in your basement. Um, like <laughs> anyway. Um, and we obviously wanted to support instructors. Um, and then, and then obviously, without saying, we needed to attract the new generation to funnel into into those colleges that we recruit from. So, with that, uh, I'm going to try to. Hopefully, this works. I'm going to play a video of um, of. Uh, a bit of this and it, and it gives you a bit of an introduction to this and then I'll go on to a few more slides here. Hi, I'm Carly Edgman. I'm the Design Student Relations Coordinator at FCA. I oversee all of the K-12 initiatives that we do and I also work with all of the universities and colleges. So when we go to schools um, and colleges, we're sponsoring projects, we're doing portfolio reviews, we're trying to get students ready for the professional world, we're trying to develop those relationships. At the K-12 level, we're just trying to get them excited, try to get to know them, get them just into art in general. The high school students, we're really trying to let them know that this is a career path. A lot of times they're passionate about it and they don't know that it's a path they can choose. So it's all about awareness really at that age. The Drive for Design contest is a contest for high school students, grade 10 through 12, and its sole purpose really is to reach students across the country and increase the awareness of automotive design as a career. It's important for FCA to host this type of contest because they're finding oftentimes students aren't aware of careers in design, and we're really just trying to get the word out there and inspire students to follow their, their creative passion. So imagination as a career is actually something that we developed. It's like a curriculum for students, teachers, parents, something that we hope art teachers will use in the classroom. We want them to educate students on design thinking, automotive design, and we hope that this would be a useful tool for them. The advice that we give to parents is just to be open-minded, to know that there are a lot of jobs out there in design. Everything is designed. Um, it can be very lucrative. So we just hope that they'll allow their child to be creative and explore the opportunities within those fields. People can find out more about the Drive for Design contest and our imagination as a career initiative at fcadriveforddesign.com. So that kind of gives you a little bit of preview, and, and I'm going to actually jump to the uh, to the website at, at some point here uh, and and go through uh, a bit of, of resources that are there that I would if if anybody is so inclined and they want to pull them up, download the PDFs. Um, by all means, uh, do so. Um, one of the things that I, I, I tried to do creatively, because of course, when you go in and you ask for budget to support a curriculum of K through 12, um, you're kind of looked at with, why, really? Um, so what I did uh, was find a really incredibly talented intern. So um, Mary Ann is our intern or was our intern who, uh, with the help of Carly, uh, helped uh, develop a curriculum. Um, that curriculum was, was informed quite a bit with uh, a National Art Educators Association. So um, we felt obviously, I mean, 
as industrial designers, we have an idea, uh, but uh, we, we certainly aren't teachers. Um, so uh, we, uh, we, we partnered with National Art Educators Association, and that partnership uh, we were hoping was really going to be highlighted uh, during uh, a, during the well. It turned out it was March 23rd, March 20th through the 26th, and obviously did, that didn't happen. Um, we had uh, we had some workshops set up. Uh, we had a keynote speaker. This is uh, Ryan Patrick Joyce. His mother was actually a part of um, the National Art Educators Association. Uh, he is. It's funny this picture here. He's in his Jeep. He's also the interior designer for the Wrangler, the current Wrangler and current uh, Gladiator. Um, so, keynote speaker, um, we were going to go through our curriculum. Um, I thought it was important that we came up with a name that if this work came back to a parent, uh, that they could. And they would all of a sudden, you would hope that the, the imagination is a career that would, would kind of allow them um, or give them some sense of, of, of hope that, well, maybe my, my creative child can, can have a career on this. So um, probably didn't expect to see a giraffe on this. Um, but uh, what we realized, too, is that we needed to have, have, a, have a curriculum that supported um, almost K through fifth grade, and then probably a curriculum from sixth up until 10th. After that, I think that a lot of times your mind has been made up and all of the courses have been set in, in path and, and you're off in, in um, applying for colleges. But we, uh, we, wanted a, we wanted a curriculum that, that could support that. So on the website, which I'll click to, um, is a poster. A poster can be printed. Um, it actually has a curriculum that you could go through, a teacher could go through. So it was important to have this one printed out so it could go to a, you know, it could live in a, live in a classroom setting. If things work out um, on this, um, so I would encourage you, if you could, to go to the SCA Drive for Design. Um, and on that, um, let me see if I can find it. Um, you would go there and you would see um, just a simple um, a simple website. Uh, it obviously talked about the contest. It has um, it has some clips on the designers and the resources and and, and their experiences, what they do um, uh, from clay sculpting, color material, sorry, uh, and um, interior exterior design. But we also have this uh, button here, resources. And resources goes through this process, and you can see our, our resources here. There's the poster, and then there's also the um, the, the workbook uh, in there as well. Um, you'll see that we also have one for sixth through twelfth grade um, work as well. Um, if I clicked on the um, on uh, the let me see if I can figure this part out. Hang on. Oh, I guess I can't go that way. Um, it goes through the story of Ralph. Yeah, uh, Ralph the giraffe. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it's coincidence by all means. Um, but the the overview is is that you know it's it's what we are, what our brands are, what's transportation. How do we design? It's developing an empathy for for Ralph, uh, understanding his environment, his senses, his needs, uh, and we go through that whole process with a student uh, there. Um, things that he likes, things that he doesn't like. Um, you know, go figure. He doesn't like seagulls or lightning, and he likes spaghetti and and um, stuff like that, right? Um, so look at, you know, develop a, some sort of understanding for Ralph, uh, some of the products that he might need, um, and just go ahead and go through this, this design process supporting Ralph's desire to go see his friends. Um, and then what you'll see then 
is it's their turn to try. Uh, what we've done now is in words if they'd like, or with a drawing, they can start to develop their character's name um, and, and a little bit about them, a, a persona of them, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, and go through that whole process of, of what are the interior features that your, your character might need, right? What are those things? And, and let them go through that process of designing both the interior, the outside, uh, color and materials, and then we talk about the design loop, right? The iterative loops that you go through, um, and 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 uh, and we can then have them, and we've done this with with some students, uh, then have them pitch their their ideas to their students and let them build on it, do it collaboratively. All of the stuff that we have to do is. As uh, professional designers, so that's what we've got. And then again, we have um, the team that which all have QR codes attached to them. So if they come back with their to their parents with the workbook, they the parents can actually uh, see all of this as well. So that's um, that's one. I'll jump back to the presentation here. Obviously, we interact with large, uh, older kids as well. Um, we thought it would be a little bit more appropriate if we we touched on something a little bit more concrete and more more skill based on this one. Um, younger kids is more imagination. Uh, it was more like empathy, um, and then uh, with the older kids, we focused a little bit on the development of, of our portal uh, show car. Same premise. It's just a little deeper in, in terms of uh, content. Um, and, and activities associated with it. Um, and um, I'll blow through this one pretty quick because I think I'm running out of time. Um, color materials group, uh, all of these, again, QR codes that can be done. Um, what we have here is a bit of the brief of what we were doing for, for the portal, um, some of the considerations we had uh, with, uh, with the users the maturation of a family going through through that and then how a car could could uh, support that that the maturing of the families through those so feature sets through this color materials um, and then we go through a bit of a process of of sketching and just fundamental fundamental kind of development tools on that um, to a photo to a rendering right um, and all that's there um, design your own, and it's a bit of a sketchbook. So we have, um, this is a PDF, and then those those students that are close to us, um, we can provide them actually a sketchbook with, uh, with all of that detail into it. Um, I think uh, one of the biggest successes has been is now we've done the drive for design, and we're, you know, we're early into obviously the, the, um, the workbook work but the drive for design has started to net us uh, some good talented uh, interns uh, and those interns are starting to turn into into full-time employees as well so um, actually there's uh, um, quite a few on this and you saw in the videos these are these are winners for the design drive these two gentlemen were winners for the drive for design competition a couple of years back they completed their degrees at, at CCS. They were interns for us uh, for one reason or another. Uh, they've opted to, to uh, they're gainfully employed. I'm sure their parents are really happy. Um, they're not with us, um, but, uh, but uh, there's a few on here that, uh, uh, that from an intern standpoint that, that uh, have, have joined us um, in the UX side and in our data development side as well. So, um, wrapping up, um, why we're doing all of this is that, you know, obviously we just want to, we want to get to a place where we can in, in, entice people, um, exceed our pipeline, entice the students, uh, and then ultimately be a, be a great place for, for the students uh, to work at, FCA to be a great place for the students to work at, if we could ever get them to see our studios. <laughs> That's I, I, been a weird thing too. With uh, our interns are now virtual, right? Um, so we we continue the commitment that we had with our interns, and um, 
um, and they're doing it virtually. So um, they're they're all over the country, right? Working as a team. So. So this is this is beautiful, uh, actually, uh, Tim. What we are doing, what you are doing, I think raising that awareness. Uh, or the first point, I think the entire genesis of it, as you were saying about uh, making sure. Uh, art becomes a viable part of the education kind of and career. So uh, are you, are you, it happened with me also when I was growing up or back in back in India, uh, the only things, uh, means I come from a very quintessential uh, uh, Indian dad and mom, they wanted me to be a doctor, nothing else. Either a doctor or maybe uh, if it compromises, you can be an engineer kind of and thing, but art was nowhere on the scene. Means no fault right. of theirs, they were never exposed to it. Uh, so I must, I thought that was only in the Indian subcontinent, but when I came over here uh, 18 years ago, 19 years ago, still, it's not the parents don't push themselves or not themselves, the kids toward art. So are you saying we should literally make, uh, in a way, art compulsory or just an, again an option because you said your kids were not? I, I think at least from a, a design thinking curriculum, um, there needs to be, as we move forward, uh, there needs to be a recognition um, that that's an essential skill set. You know, it, it's it's really interesting because you never, I don't know if it's the grandiose kind of big head industrial designer kind of thing, but I mean the the fact that we have to have a, um, a knowledge of of so many different facets uh, of 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 the process. Um, you know, one of the things we obviously we weren't beating them up on was, you know, the margins, right? Or how are they going to make it? Or how are they going to manufacture it? All those other things that, that you know, we, that 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 we have to work through. Um, and that those become the, really the challenging parts of, of all of that. Given all the constraints, how do you work around them to create a, a project or a product that people want? Um, but that's a skill set that I think every every child, uh, every kid needs to understand is that they you know they're developing they're going to be part of a service right they're going to have a service um but there's always going to be some empathy for either the customers uh and and that that piece of that that i i think it's it should be a fundamental um mm -hmm. there i i belong to but that art, from an art class standpoint um you know i i think if we can at least get to design thinking kind of process uh, I think the artist will uh, will emerge from that. Yeah, I would hope. It, it would. I Means and what you are doing is really exceptional, and it's nice to have the FCA uh, engine behind it. Uh, we are a small studio, uh, but we also uh, do our part in trying to make sure create the awareness and host uh, uh, kids, little kids. I Means we go to the uh, Boy Scouts clubs also and host them at the studio just to cue them and action of like, wow, this is what you do. By the way, the first time when my kid came to our studio, we just were wrapping down a, uh, a brainstorming session with the client and there were, you know, uh, studio brainstorming sessions. But apart from post-it notes, there are plenty of Lego blocks and clay here and there. And he comes back and says, mommy, daddy just plays with Legos in the, you know, <laughs> so there's a different part for that too. But so we also try a, a lot on that. By the way, uh, uh, a few of our design studio members actually. Uh, so going back to the uh, elements of which uh, I think you know, or we all know, Michigan is still uh, the number one state in the highest amount of industrial designers as compared to any other state in the nation. So we already are in a little bit more better than any other state, including uh, California too. Uh, uh, either way you cut it, actual number or per capita. Uh, but we want to make sure we keep that. We have to keep the pipeline full. And that's why I think you know, this is really good. But it also gels in the way of the formation of MDC, the Michigan Design Council. Uh, you know, some of our uh, design studio uh, staff is a part of the board member there. I am one of the board members. Ralph a, is one of the board members. It's a great, yeah, no, that's, that's fantastic. Right? Yeah. I mean, I think that the, the work, the efforts that you guys have with that has been fantastic. And if you want, uh, they also have, uh, means you have your own, uh, let's say, specific competition uh, for design. Uh, but state-wise, we also have uh, different, uh, I would say, uh, competitions to really, uh, the, the vision is the same, to infuse and diffuse how to critically think. Uh, let's say, if Ralph, the neck is big, a long pillow, or the things about it, it's, it's all, 
it's it, in a way it's not rocket surgery, but you have to make sure you structurally think about all those things. And uh, so, if you want, mm -hmm. I can take you back to the chairman uh, of the MDC uh, if you want. The second part is uh, we have uh, another client. Uh, it's called Michigan Virtual. Actually, Jamie, uh, the president and CEO, he was on the BDC for the last one as such. So they're also trying to uh, see how to engage into remote learning. This was started before the COVID one also. So uh, right now, I think we are in this world and hopefully we are not in this world for a lot of time, but still uh, remote learning would help. If you want, I can connect you with uh, Jamie also uh, as such. Uh, so there might be some other ways. That yeah, we, Michigan we were really optimistic. Uh, we had a lot of stuff planned, even, even floor space on, it was in Minnesota or Minneapolis. Uh, it's, you know, we had, uh, we were at least going to get exposed to the 6,000 uh, art, art educators, right? So we were hoping we could get to that point, you know, the, the person in, you know, the poor kid in, in Kansas, right? Who, uh, you know, has, who wants to be a car designer or wants to be a graphic designer or wants to be a fashion designer, you know, that, 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 uh, that an art teacher could come back and say, hey, let's try this as a, as a curriculum or let's play around with this or here's a resource maybe you should look at. So anybody who is so inclined, if you want to do this, take it, copy it, turn it into your own. Um, I, I think it is, it's it's good stuff, and I think it's incumbent of us uh, to to support and advocate for for design thinking in the K through 12. Uh, yeah, uh, I think one of, your, one of your slides you mentioned about the parents' assurance. How, how is how is uh, your program trying to really win the parents over? Because I see there are plenty of kids in the studio and they're going through these programs. Do you also encourage the parents to come in and see what's happening? How do you win them? Because they're the main influencer. And yeah, and, and you know, obviously that's the one where if if you do have a chance to get the parents in 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 the office, that's that's a good thing. But that's a very that's a rarity. Um, uh, anytime. You know, there's a couple of evening times where you can go and, and have a conversation with at a career night. Um, you know, that's the best you can you can do there. Um, you hope that you know the brochure or something comes back and the QR codes are there and the imagination is a career and they could you know just pop on the QR code and and, and look at 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 what what a, a, a industrial sculptor can do or or does, or, or what a what a in, interior designer, what an exterior designer, what color materials are, just to know that there's these professions that are there, then I'm sure they had no idea, of, unless you're a part of heavily a part of the industry. Um, so, and we just trying to go around and try to get some questions from the chat. Also, are you personally involved in these workshops too? Do you do you do you do you go in those workshops and? Do you, I means I know you are a veteran of industry, 30 years in making, but do you still learn anything from these younger minds uh, in these workshops with them? Oh, yeah. So, you know, you had mentioned the Michigan Design Challenge, um, one of the schools, and, and we got somehow linked up. It was Roosevelt Elementary, West Bloomfield. Um, and a lot of those pictures actually come from there. And a lot of our, our testing was actually done at, at Roosevelt as well. But we've been going in uh, on on a yearly basis. It's a couple times a, a year uh, to help students um, build their their uh, their invention, right? Their design. Um, what do you learn? Is that it's it's always a, it's an amazing thing to watch an unfiltered idea kind of evolve, right? And and yeah, now with the skill set that you have in 30 years and all the rest of this stuff, you can start to build on those little creative ideas um, that uh, that a student has, right? And and that's the the success of that Michigan Design Challenge um, competition is that they start out with like a really kind of a it's a great nugget, and then with with the skill sets that 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 we can help provide, um, you can you can evolve that into something very very meaningful and purposeful so so how has been uh, uh, the academic uh, i would say reception been for this program because uh, you are you you are helping put the entire program together but how are the school superintendents and 
and that kind of a community embracing it or uh, or, or otherwise. So I mean, we we were hoping obviously to have a, a lot more exposure. Um, we we went uh, the year prior to uh, to Boston the the um, the national um, National Art Educators Association conference uh, with. Uh, with our ideas and with the curriculum, uh, it was supported. I, I think a, a lot of teachers are looking for for a way to do this this collaborative learning. And obviously, when you can tie engineering and you can tie you know um, math and you can tie engineering and you can tie um, all the rest of the uh, um, the functions to to that, uh, it it really helps bolster the need for art so um they they were they were very receptive to it and and a lot of teachers look look for something that is that's new um and can can entice uh uh and keep keep the attention of some students as well so yes that's pretty interesting but uh, about uh, you talked about success when uh, do you have your attributes of the success of your program and uh how are you quantifying the success of this one inside its CA? So what we try to do is, right, obviously put, um, we we do have a relationship with um, DASH. I don't know if you guys have heard of DASH, da yeah. Design Art Senior High it's in Miami. Okay. Um, it's, a, it's a public school um, affiliated with the Miami-Dade County, uh, and it's a design school. Um, one of the things that we've been, fortunate enough to have is now we have six uh, six designers that have come from there. this school first graduating class was in 2020 or 20 uh, and 2000 we have six designers in our staff that are uh, from from the design art senior high wow. um, it, it's pretty remarkable it's a, just a one one school so um, I think you know, what we what we hope to find is that there's some some superintendent uh, somewhere in the country that that has the same uh, passion who could could create um, and, and model a curriculum uh, around uh, around design thinking um, that um, we could start to recruit from. So I think you got to have a very long view on this. You know, it's like I was at, to to see a student who's in fourth grade that wants to do this now, right? As if I, I think I my career at FCA is going to be long over. Um, but to see a student that you may have had an opportunity to 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 interact with at uh, you know ninth, tenth, and eleventh grade, you know now and then into your college career. And then, as an intern and all of that process, um, you know, you, you still have to have a long view, right? Because it can't be instantaneous. Um, so, um, our our goal, like I said, is that, you know, if we get talented students into the colleges, um, you know, then all the OEMs and then everybody, right, will will compete for them. But we we need to increase that talent pool. So it's just not the three or four students that everybody's looking at at the graduated level right because there's always those right there's always this one where it's a they're getting you know multiple offers um i do think that one of our one of our things that you know who would have thought um you know three and a half months ago you know it's like y'all you know, everybody needs to come to detroit you know, now not so much right yeah now you can be wherever you want so, and and some of the um, Google tools are still working, although albeit you need when you talk right. about design right. of exteriors, uh, the way you step back and look at the actual clay or the physical properties is a completely different element. As by the way, it was great to see some of the familiar, familiar faces uh, uh, in your presentation. We saw Ralph Giles, I think we saw Mark Tossel Jr., yep. saw Kelly yep. Takas, uh, all, all yep. great, friends and, uh, great designers, and nice to see that they are uh, adding. Adding their own, I would say, elements to the uh, to the to the cause as such too. Uh, but about about design thinking as such, apart from let's say these young minds, any any other way we can promote uh, to our local communities? Any other way you're trying apart from this? 
knock on uh, knock on doors, advocate, <laughs> talk to your art teachers. It's important to go and those who have kids, um, right? Yeah. Go to the conferences and be the one per one parent that goes to the art class and then start promoting um promoting the profession. Um I I think uh you know, send your kids to if you have the ability, um get them to art to get them to extracurricular uh, art classes. Um from an age of four to fourteen, it was every Friday night. I uh, I went to Mr. Ritchie's with you know ten other kids in his basement and we did art right we were we were in art class. Wow. Mr. Ritchie's right, and then I think of it as like the the art teachers that I remember and then the industrial art teachers I remember their names right Miss Merkel and Mr. Jewett, and it's like those are the only two that I remember, you know, and all the rest I don't remember, but those were the ones that were impactful so. If if you can talk to your art teachers, your kids' art teachers, um, any superintendent will listen to a parent, taxpayer, right? <laughs> um, that uh, uh, and just advocate for it. You know, if you can volunteer, volunteer. If you can show them a website, right? Um, they might uh, they might be so inclined to to utilize it. Yeah, I, if I, not, then you. I have done some couple of things. I, mean, I think a few years ago, uh, I was uh, privileged to be an, a conference organizer for IDSS flagship conference. And for the final date, it was a three and a half day long conference. For the final day, Tim, uh, we actually uh, had all our audience, and it's all designers, literal designer uh, centric conference, right? IDSA. Uh, we literally. A lot of like, scars. Come again? A lot of scars. No. <laughs> <laughs> and no socks. Uh, <laughs> That, that's that's how uh, I believe people uh, think about us and, and designer goggles like uh, Karim Rashid. Right. Uh, but the thing is, the last day what we did was the entire half day, uh, the panel was completely the, all the designers, uh, let's say all the designers in the audience, uh, thousands of them were encouraged to bring their kids to the conference. Um, as they could not go for lunch and all those things, but you are allowed and encouraged to bring kids and put them in the front lines to listen to the designers and all the design speakers who were for that sort were all uh, game designers, uh, toy designers, uh, children's uh, equipment designers and art space designers. So their actual audience was in the first uh, front row. We still we had a decent turnout of kids coming over there, but that was pretty interesting to just try out where the kids also can go with their parents and actually at the conference and see like, yeah, the, the Legos I play with, uh, the, the other uh, toys that we play with uh, are actually designed by somebody and then how they can be a part of yeah. it, like chain model. That's, that, that's, that's pretty interesting. I think you, uh, I know we are a little bit over time uh, and I know Kurt is still waiting over there patiently, uh, but I, uh, means you said in the second grade when you showed the images of what you were sketching, it was bears influenced you just like Teddy Roosevelt, I think. He also was enamored. I think if it was up to him as a president, he wanted to change from American bald eagle to a to a bear. He would have been happy otherwise. But uh, any 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 big inspirational or turning moments happened with you when you were going through the education that made you be a designer that you are today. How did you turn to be an industrial designer with the odds against you when you were young? Well, no, I, I had I had all of those opportunities in high school, right? And and um, uh, and it, it just seemed like a natural progression. I thought I was going to be a graphic designer. Um, I got the brochure. I was like, I'm uh, from the University of Cincinnati. I didn't know anything about industrial design at the time. Then I flipped the page over, and there was a picture of a guy uh, and a sketch of a car. And then you read the description, you're like, oh that sounds cooler than the graphic design page. So I stayed and I applied for that. And, um, you know, I, I, fortunately, I think at those times too, it was, it was based off of a portfolio. Uh, now because of where we're at in some cases, it's all ACT and SAT stuff. And, and, um, you know, I don't, again, I don't know if this is a just grumpy old, old man kind of talk, but it was, uh, it seemed like it was a little bit more robust 
is that the skill sets were were different entering and what we see and I don't know maybe if those on the line um, the skill sets that you see now at a junior senior level aren't quite as as where you where they where they may have been or where we think they were um, when when we graduated yeah. um, because I think that your your training right you've got to bring these students up to up to a, a point where they can visualize their their ideas and if they don't anyway so no, I, I think I should, I should connect you to uh, 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 the Michigan Design Council uh, members that we have in our studio. Uh, uh, David Byron is one of them. Uh, and, and you, him, and Ralph Jeans, I think you should petition to uh, have a chief design officer for the U.S. as such, right? Means there are countries in the world where the government actually has, just as our chief infectious disease officer, they also should have, I would say, a chief industrial design officer and, and somehow, I think Bill Moveridge, one of the original of uh, uh, IDEO, he wanted to do that petition, but eventually we lost him a few years ago, but maybe you and a couple of others can carry that torch. Uh, awesome, I think uh, all good things have to come to an end. I think, uh, thank you again for your time. Uh, I think you have all the links to uh, the FCA uh, design uh, course as such, and Lanea already had put that into the uh, into the chat uh, chat as such. So, if there are any more questions, uh, we cannot uh, answer uh, all of them. Uh, but if there are any more questions and they become uh, prudent, I will I will pass them on to you. But thank you, fantastic. Once thank you, right. once thank you for the enthusiasm uh, and everything else. And uh, feel free to uh, unmute yourself and unvideo yourself. But feel free to be on the panel. And feel, if you if you I want to add something as we are going forward, just raise your hand and come in. Sounds great. Thank you.